crap. I'm just gonna use my mic sensitivity and I'll do this. There you go. That'll make it easier. <laughs> Hey guys, just real quick, I wanted to apologize for the amount of echo there is at the very beginning of this podcast. It does even itself out around the 30 to 40 minute mark, um, kind of, but not entirely. It was caused by an issue with the audio input that I had from the new equipment that I had just gotten with the GoXLR Mini and the Shure SM7B microphone that I just got. So again, I do apologize. If y'all want to skip ahead to the 30 to 45 minute mark, you'll miss a lot, but it will even itself out around there. Again, I do apologize. And next week's podcast is going to be significantly better. I've already fixed the issue. So I hope you all enjoy and let me know what you think in the comments below. Now back to the podcast. But I have boba just to make myself a little happy. Well, it's like green tea boba with like the lowest calorie one you could possibly have, but it still tastes really good. So... Hey Link, do you have me set as an editor on your on your uh, Twitch? Yeah. Because I'm trying to find the option to change your title so I can change it to the podcast. Truth. Here, let me do it real quick. <clears throat> For the life of me, I do not see. Oh yeah, that that's a good happen. point. I mean, if he's, oh, wait. yeah, yeah that's a good point. Talk shows and I mean, if you're a mod, you can kind of do it, but I'm not exactly sure. Like, it just depends on like. Talk shows and podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. There's also a separate setting that you can also set someone as an editor. Yeah. You can have them as a mod, and you can set them as an editor so they can edit your title and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, my, my mods, mods have that ability through, like, uh, like slobs and, like, white slobs. Because I have, like, the premium. So it's like, here, give them the powers. <laughs> the powers invested in me allow me to do this. Like, all right. Voice. All right. Cool. Yeah, I did not see the option. Like, like exclam the whole like exclamation, exclamation mark, mark and then the really long title thing and then poof everything starts. Yeah, no, you've got to actually like, like it, it's like a chat command that you have to type in. I think. Do you know the chat command? No, I do not. <clears throat> Without pulling up uh, stream elements, but I've already fixed it. Uh, so what's up, guys? Trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to survive. I'm actually like, I'm like, my, my, the only reason my day is good is because I'm hanging out with you guys and I had a good stream today. That's the only thing that's keeping me alive. <laughs> or like, good. keeping me happy. Those are like, literally the only two things. Yeah, Other you came that, in with a rate of 19 people earlier. That's a hell of a, that's a hell of a viewing to... Pass on. I'm thank, at thank you again for that. Today. It, it would have been, been higher, higher, I think, if I didn't take so long trying to like rake you. <laughs> I was trying to close <laughs> out the stream, and it was just like, oh, thank you. But you're very welcome. Um, what were you streaming? I stream Pokemon, Pokemon Go as usual. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. I know you're like training for the tournament and everything that's coming up. I didn't, I didn't even, even go. That's, that's how, how bad, bad it was. I didn't really? even go to the one. Not, I didn't go to the one in San Francisco, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to Orlando. Wow. That's how bad it is. Yeah, like this isn't right. And if you're not 100, percent and just because I have because I'm training, like I'm using a simulation, but you can't beat live experience. So no. going to San Francisco was my basically my practice round into Orlando, and I don't have that practice round. So right. I mean, I, I asked stream and they agreed, and like, don't go, and I'm like, yeah, this isn't right, so, yeah. It sucks because a lot of my friends were going to that tournament San Francisco. It was 18 deep, and I knew half of the, half of the competitors, so, damn. Yeah, that sucks. But it is. But, <clears throat> that, that's... How did you guys do? Uh, I had a pretty decent stream. I mean, you with your raid and everything, it, um, it picked up there for a little bit and then died off when I went to go get food. Um, food is always necessary. Food is necessity. Food is necessity. That's why I have this. That's why I have this. Yeah. It's, nice. it's beautiful. That's why I have a half eaten sandwich behind me. Half eaten sandwich, sandwich sounds amazing. I, I mean, right now, right now, so. My sandwich is about half eaten. There's no freedom. <laughs> um, do, you have it, do you have it where you can hear Basurcat? Yeah, yeah, I can hear it too. Okay, cool. Like, awesome. Awesome. Sick. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Everybody, welcome to the Head Glitch Podcast. Uh, this one's a little bit special because it's the first podcast. This is going to be episode three. 
This is the first podcast that we've live streamed. So we're live on Twitch. Uh, I'll have my uh, Twitch channel in the description down below if you guys want to be here for next week's recording of the podcast. We will also be live uh, during that recording. Um, I'm also joined, as always, by Basuricat on my far left. And then we have a we have a new podcaster with us today. A wild Charmander appeared. Well, or the, the wild Charmander was supposed to be here last week, but he was in Asia. So he was in Asia. So, <laughs> uh, a, the, a wild king of Charmanders actually. Uh, he's I also another Hoppers, Twitch streamer. Filipino monster. Also another Twitch streamer. Uh, streams a lot of Pokemon Go, and. Uh, I think this is the first time we've had everyone on here besides just like me and Basuricat that everyone is or was in the military. Mm-hmm. Yeah, someone's either active duty or we're all veterans. Either yeah. way, we're some, some, way, some way affiliated with, with the military. military. Basuricat's the active duty for now. Ooh, the yeah, he's, 214 is strong. It's he's very strong. got his fucking... Uh, Dress blues in the closet there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Air Force! Oh, dude! I can't imagine the state of the Air Force right now, but then I guess that's what I was, so hopefully you're doing fine, bro. I mean, we're currently converting into being the Space Force as well. And so, we're all <laughs> like, so news, like. And I was like, bye. Honestly, like, I almost. <laughs> I, I thought about re enlisting when I heard about the Space Force. I was like, dude, so okay. that is the. the, uh, the Base on the map has now been transferred from an Air Force base to a Space Force base. So oh, not in technically uh, at uh, Shriver, Colorado. Ooh. So yeah, so technically I'm part of the United States Space Force uh, SPOC, which is Space Operations Command, instead of, you know, Air Force oh, Space Command. It. it is. I like yeah. it. It is. I like it. You know, somebody, some kind of nerd came up with that one. What should we call the Space Command? Hmm. Spock. Hey, they're gonna get more shit than the Air Force will because, <laughs> you know, I Joy- mean, Stop, we play with joysticks. Well, it's like every, everybody, <laughs> when when he first announced the Space Force, everybody started making fun of him. And I'm like, have you not played Halo? There's yeah, motherfuckers like, out there like, that are trying to get us, awesome. and like, we need a Space Force, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> Absolutely. Like, I love Halo. Halo is life, and Halo is. I love the series, and I can't wait till it comes out this December. I know it takes a really long time, but we're going to get it anyway, so. Right. got to be grateful for something. I'm thinking about getting the saying, uh, Master Chief Collection on PC now that it's on PC. There was wholeheartedly no reason to make the Space Force. Oh, there's really not. There really isn't. We just no. needed something special for the Air Force. I mean, you know how the Marines has the Navy. Yeah, the Navy has the Marines. Yeah, you got. You had to do something. For the Air Force had to feel a little special to do what they had to do. I mean, hey, if it makes it easier to be ought to be an O, why not? <laughs> right. Right. I mean, I guess. I mean, they already have a program like that up, right? To from like E to O, if you're like a tech or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's called. Uh, oh, what is it called? Uh, the Warren Officer program? OTS. It's a program yeah. that lets you go to uh, officer training school. Yeah. But you have yeah, to have, you know, a bachelor's before you can apply for it. Yeah, we have, uh, the, the Navy has OCS, Officer Candidacy School. And all of the officers, uh, all of the officer candidates are actually trained by Marines. It's pretty funny. Ooh, yeah, that's like Marine Master Chief, uh, or uh, Marine Master Sergeants. Like full metal jacket. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I miss those days. Not really. I don't, I don't miss those days. Like Marine Gunnies and Marine Master Sergeants are the ones that are overseeing the uh, officer candidates at OCS, <clears throat> and it um. I thought about going to OCS. I thought about finishing out my degree in uh, in software development and going to OCS, like my bachelor's degree, and going back and going into OCS. But then I thought, 
No. Fuck that shit. Make way too much money as it is. <laughs> yeah, after I got DQ'd and I want to be a therapist, I was like, deuces. Yeah. Well, it's not like I had a choice anyway, I was forced out, but hey, right. I take that disability. So. Right. <laughs> Being forced out wasn't bad. Hey, I got seven years. That's seven years of shit that I've been through already. I'm done. KO, uh, decisions. Yeah, I'm done. Were you in Spec Ops, by the way, Tim? Mm hmm Aha, that's where the beard comes from, because I served with, I served with Pararescue. Nice. I was their supply down there, What's so up, I was an NCIC of supply over there, so it was a great career, great two years of my life, and those guys, like, you are fucking crazy. And I don't know why you want to drag me into your world, but I still love you. <laughs> Actually... <laughs> You Actually, should go be a pair, or you should be a pair, you should be a PG. I'm like, nah, dude, I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. Right. You guys are a whole different breed of crazy. Why the fuck would I, I jump you, out Jeff. of a perfectly good airplane? That's what I always hear. I mean, I jump out of a perfectly good airplane. The fuck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm playing the fucking broken to do it, but I'd fucking do it. Right? As long as you know how to land, which, granted, no one knows how to land. <laughs> Let the ground take you. Let the ground take you. Let the ground and your soul take you. But hey, disability, right? Right. Service connected. I was just, right. <laughs> I was just kidding. I, I honestly that. thought about um, I thought about trying to fight to get uh, either like some kind of benefits or some kind of pay from the navy. But to be completely honest, it wouldn't even be enough. Like, I would still have to work a second job. I couldn't rely on that and stream full-time. Mm. Even getting out of the I mean, you know, a lot of us want, like, dual things anyways. Like, me being a therapist and streaming, I don't think I ever want to be a full-time streamer. If it happens, cool, but I'm never going to try to stop being a therapist. I'll still do psychotherapy. I mean, I I'm, a, I'm a server right now. Why does the fucking cameras keep flickering like yeah that. keep on saying that on your yeah on your it's like so, this, this is, is like some final destination, destination shit yo so if everybody, everybody dies, dies you'll know why <laughs> please don't <laughs> no like i don't know why the cameras keep flickering like that because i know it i had no issues with the cameras earlier during my stream or anything like that yeah. um I mean, I mean, it's still going, going smoothly, smoothly from what I see. I mean, mine's just doing fine as far as I see. I'm like, are you okay? Yeah, I can see that. It's like, Yours is just really blurry. Your frame rate must be like, what, like 30 FPS? I'm not entirely sure. Or probably less than that, because mine is 30 FPS. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I mean mine's 60. It's pretty clear, but like, not super clear. But mine's 30 it's simply it's because I've got it on uh, 4K mode. Instead of yeah, 720 mode, give myself yeah. 60. I have no idea what mode is mine. I just can see my sexy ass face and I'm good. Right? <laughs> right? But no, I actually, I actually didn't have the beard whenever I was in the Navy. This was, uh, I've only been working on my beard for the last year. You want to see a picture of when I was beardless? I mean, it looks beardless? great. I mean, me, I baby face, so it's almost impossible. So, yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture. Yeah, I'm going to show you a beard. I'm okay. going to show you a picture of what it looked like. But so I just keep it. I just pre keep it anyway, so like, once, once I get I even a little bit, I'm like, all right, you know, this is dumb. Plus, when, when you have your gi on and you know what I'm talking about, like, that shit sucks. When someone, someone tries to choke, choke you, you're like, oh. Oh, my God. He's a virgin. Holy guy. shit. I cannot I imagine. It's me minus the beard. Holy crap. That was almost one year ago. February 15th. It'll be a year. February 15th. Oh my god. Please keep your beard on. It's beautiful. Oh, I, am. I love it. <laughs> why, why is you without a beard really reminding me of an actor, but I can't think of his fucking name? I don't know. Hold up. <laughs> let, let me go see if I can find it real quick. Alright. Uh. <coughs> But no, yeah, I um, I, I can't I can't, I can't fucking think about it. Like, I, I couldn't grow a beard when I was in the navy. I mean, I was nineteen yeah, when I, I was in. I couldn't grow a beard. Like... I couldn't grow a beard until I was like twenty three, twenty four, something like that. So, yeah, I mean, I'm twenty seven, and it's not. It doesn't look like it's gonna rapidly grow, and I look still because it's the Asian fucking genes. Yeah, it's yeah. because you're Asian, yeah. I yeah, got a buddy of mine that's trying and trying and trying to grow a beard. He's Vietnamese and cannot grow a beard. Good luck, bro. Can't he can barely grow a mustache? 
Oh, oh damn, damn it. it. I'm running. Oh, ooh, ooh, look at all the bubble tea. Yeah, look at all the bubble tea. Like, yo, that's like all bubble. That's all bubble, that's all bubble tea. I need like a spoon now, but I'm just gonna have a little bit of fun. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Huh? It's. It's, it's bubble tea. tea. Well, it's I, 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 I get that it's bubble tea, but I don't know what bubble version. tea is. Okay, okay so, so bubble tea is like these sweet little balls of like sweet. You, you know what okay, boba sure. is? No, I mean yeah, that's just what he's is. talking about is boba. Yeah, but yeah, it's, boba. it's a different version. Bubble it's a different variant. Boba. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah, it's, it's still variant. Variant. so. This is called a gar boba. They're like lighter and they're like really low on calories. They're not but, as sweet, they're really low on calories, and they're, they're what I can drink when I'm cutting weight, so... Okay, that makes sense. I have to be healthy, so... I that's just, why uh, it's not like... You don't see the black, it's not black, it's like the healthy version. I go it still to, tastes uh, really good. I go to the kitchen and get a big-ass glass of sweet tea. With like, hey, the glass of sweet tea never fails, it's amazing. With, like, so much sugar in it that it's just diabetes in a cup. Hey, I was in Asia. I had diabetes every single day, especially in Japan. It was no mercy whatsoever. Oh, dude. The cow yeah, everything is so sweet no, in Japan. Everything is sweet. Everything is fresh, but it's insanely sweet. Like the boba your, pancakes I had. How was your trip to Japan, by the way? The trip was absolutely beautiful. Never have a dull moment in Japan. I still went to the same places. I went to Akihabara. Obviously, you have to go to Anime Nerd Central. I went to Harajuku, the anime, Animal Cafe Central, that place too. Heaven. Went back to the same cafes I used to. The workers recognized me, which was that's awesome. Pretty weird since it was like a good time. But they're like, hey, welcome back. We remember you. I'm like, yeah, I'm a little Filipino kid that came over here to pet every single cat and was like running around and feeding all of them treats. That's how they recognized me. Literally, I like made, I like emptied that dispensary for treats and then like ran around and like. That's why they that's why they remembered you is because they had to refill all the fucking treat dispensers. Like, this, this motherfucker <laughs> exactly. needs to go hey, back to the United States. He, he needs to fucking he needs to fucking quit buying all the damn treats. I'm tired of refilling this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's what happened on that first round. Went to the cat cafe, the animal cafe, and then went to a teacup poodle cafe, which I actually never went before, and it was beautiful. They were adorable, and. I hung around Tokyo. I mean, it was four days, so I couldn't get a really huge, actually five days, so it wasn't like super long, like my first trip, which was like 10. But I'm going back, so never a dual mode in Tokyo. So much to see in like every train station, so I loved it. That was like the only safe haven of my entire trip. Everything else other than seeing my nieces was shit, and I won't say why. Because a lot of drama. You're good. You're good. Yeah. But it was a whole lot of drama that I didn't want, and it was. It floated over to this day, and like, I've had better days. Actually, this whole decade has been just an absolute horror of shit, but I'm still alive. I got bubble tea. I'm good. This whole decade that's like all of 12 days long so far. <laughs> Pretty much. Since 2010. I mean, I enlisted in 2016. I'm still Nemi, trying to get out. Nemi said, bubble <laughs> tea, man. I want. Six years for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's actually a bubble tea place right up the road. Oh, really? Oh, like, like, I could be there and back in, like, five minutes. That's amazing. But I've never had it. This is what gives me diabetes. Right? Or, well, probably, probably give me diabetes because I have a family history of diabetes. So, right. Yeah. I mean, I'll have all the sweets well, in the world. I mean, yes and no. You're a really active dude, and you're, um, you're, like, probably one of the most fit people I've ever seen because you're a fighter. Like, That's only because when mental illness cries, I have to work by I, like, just make myself really tired, so I can't think. Yep. Yeah. I'm there. I, I've been there. I, uh, when, when I was... I mean, you're when I, you know way better than I do. When I was, when I was heavy into the, and when I was heavy into martial arts... And I was training every day for like five and six hours at a time. Like it just, it kept my mind off the bullshit that was going on. So I was, I just kept going. Mm -hmm. Then eventually I was, uh, I would get to the point where I was like, well, I should probably go home and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's fine. But, but that's, that's going to stop eventually for me because I love traveling and I love hiking and I don't want to... <clears throat> I can still do jujitsu, but even jujitsu now, like, everyone's getting, like, leg lock heavy 
and take down heavy, heavy so I don't want my legs to break, so right. I'm thinking about it. But I want my black belt first. After black belt, peace. I still need to get my brown belt, so two more levels, and I'm black, and after that, if I was in competition. If I would have stayed at the martial arts school that I used to train at and teach at, I had become a student instructor. And if I would stayed instead of letting... Uh, yeah, I don't know why the camera keeps flickering like that. Oh, well, I'll figure it out before paranormal we the podcast, hopefully. I'm just kidding. Please not be paranormal activity. We don't need a ghost to pop up on stream and everyone's like, holy shit. Um, I mean, that's but, okay. The ghost could drag me out the room. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? End my misery now. You'd be doing me a favor, actually. Um, Honestly. But if I would have stayed in, I made high rank six and a half years ago, almost seven years ago, I think. So, um, yeah, almost seven years ago, I became a student instructor, and that's Green Sash in the in the martial arts that I teach is Kung Fu. And I would be a... If I didn't already have my next rank as a Red Sash, I would be coming up on it very soon. Because it's uh, the, the, the biggest time gap between for any of our ranks is between blue and red and it's a six year uh time period Ooh, that's, that's the instructor thing, thing. Mm -hmm. between learning learning more advanced stuff and teaching everybody that's under you to make sure and <clears throat> even teaching people that are your level but aren't comprehending something if you understand it better uh, to be able to explain it to them a little bit better. Um, that's the whole instructor thing is like trying to work towards that. And then it goes from red to brown and then from brown to black. And I think there's a three-year difference between red and brown. <clears throat> and then I think another three-year difference between brown and black to make sure that you're ready to be a black belt. Overall, if you, in the school that I taught at, if you stay in it, the entire time from day one until you make your black belt, it's about a 15 year process. Oof. No joke. But we're one of three um, schools in the United States that is 100% full contact from day one. No pulled punches. I love no, full contact. I love full Very contact. Heavy, but I love full contact. God, nothing nothing beats it. Um, and we're uh, the owner of the school is one of three people in the United States that's recognized. One, he's one of three Caucasian men in the world that's recognized by the Shaolin Temple of China as a Grand Master <clears throat> of the temple. He's got his 10th degree Grand Master. Oh, Grandmaster ain't, ain't no joke. When you know when you, know, when you, you hear the word Grandmaster, Grandmaster, oh my god, god, holy shit. So, it's definitely a process to try and get to that point. If I ever move back to Tennessee, I'm definitely gonna... Like, once my channel takes off and I'm able to make a living solely on Twitch, I'll move back to Tennessee and I'll get back into the martial arts. I only live two hours away from there right now, but it's a two-hour drive to go get my ass kicked and then drive two hours back the same day. I like, like unless, unless you're like, like full time, time like fighting, like, like not worth it. Because I know a bunch of fighters do that. They'll they'll do training camp or they'll, they'll do their camp two hours away, and you guys are crazy. Holy crap! No, I, Man, I would never do. I would never do my actual training two hours away. Like I still, I still keep up with everything and everything here, but I can't learn more than what I already know because my instructors aren't here. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm kind, kind of doing teacher because I'm a wrestling coach. Wrestling, wrestling I can do. I can't teach jujitsu because, well, I can, but like because I'm small. Well, wrestling everything you can generally do, but because I'm small, I I have a very different way of teaching things or a very different way of doing things. That's where uh, kung fu comes in. Is like, I'm I'm the biggest I've ever been at like 185, 190. When I was really big into martial arts, I was about 155, and I was one of the three smallest people that trained and taught there as far as like people in my rank i was like there were like maybe three or four of us that were around my size two of them were smaller than me um but 
it's uh like kung fu has its own type of ground fighting so where jujitsu relies on you guys on have your like joint locks and everything like that too like mm -hmm. the way you sat is very different like you guys don't like neon belly like we do like very heavily like try to pass you just like well it's more where like you guys would go for like a full mount or a half mount mm -hmm. to move where one we don't want the fight to go to the ground to begin with if it does like fighting on the ground everyone is at a disadvantage mm -hmm. when when we're we standing when we're standing we have the advantage because there uh, to us <clears throat> there's no such thing as a fair fight and there are four places to aim in a fight Eyes, throat, groin, oh, and knees. Throat, yep. Cross, which, which I love so much. I've got, up, so. I've got no problem kicking a motherfucker in the knees and gouging his eyes out as long Absolute as I go home to loop. my family. Because that's the mm -hmm. most important thing is me making it home. If you decide that's to jump if you decide to jump me on the street, you at that point have told me I no longer care about my life. And I'm willing to sacrifice it for whatever dumbass shit I'm trying to do. And at that point, if, I mean, to a degree, if I feel I like mean, my life I is can, threatened, I then I'm going back? to. Yeah, but. I mean, there's also the four intensities. <clears throat> You've got the four places to aim and four intensities. You've got embarrass, hurt, maim, and kill. So if embarrassing the shit out of them won't work, hurt them. If hurting them doesn't work, break an arm or break a knee, maim them. Or break ankles. Break ankles. Or ankles. Um, or ribs, whatever. Like, and if that doesn't work and they keep coming after you and they try to use lethal force, then you are at that point. I mean, the way I look at it and the way the law looks at it, if they're coming at me with lethal force and I'm defending myself with lethal force, and they lose, that's self-defense. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, we're, we're better if we could pull it off. Like, <laughs> I mean, be like, hey. honestly, it wouldn't even be <laughs> right. You and your yeah, fucking 32-round like, like, magazine. Because, <laughs> you know, you got that <laughs> random white dude that walks around there and, like, shoots that guy, and you're like, oh, what, what the fuck? fuck? Like, yo, yo that, that was racism. racism. <laughs> but at the same time you've got uh hold on i'm trying to mess with my chat mixer um it's like <laughs> what are those hornady or are they civil defense hmm. hold that up closer to the camera oh, okay yeah they look like civil defense there for a minute but um I'm in California I don't know where my bags are right now but it's in the locker in Arizona yeah probably <laughs> but yeah again hitting someone with this and a bullet pops out is it is very entertaining to see right <laughs> just smack just them with it and not oh shit oh shit oh shit <laughs> You're trying yeah, to yeah, just, just, just fucking nail him. it backwards and it jams and you're like, well, how did that happen? And you're like, oh, you fucking idiot. What? Yeah, man, Why? you just put behind in my ears. <laughs> Why is there an impression of a 9mm uh, hollow point in your forehead? Well, you see what had happened was I got smacked in the face with a magazine filled with 9mm hollow points. And yeah, man, just to fucking... <laughs> Every time. Very enjoyable to hear. But, like, honestly, it wouldn't even be my... It, I mean, I didn't go through Spec Ops training as much as I would have liked to. I, uh... That shit's expensive. God, sir. Oh, yeah. I, um... My knee blew out in training, and that's when they sent me home. So, I didn't even... I didn't even make it past three months in the military. But... Was it three... So I don't fucking know. It was ten years ago. Um a long time ago. But like it wouldn't even be any kind of like military training that would be responsible for me like going that route. I've had I've had more experience in martial arts than I did in the military. I'm twenty eight. Just over twenty years of martial arts experience. 
So, like, it wouldn't even be anything that I learned in the military. It would be all what I know from martial arts. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Well, we kind of did, but no, we didn't have a lot of good jujitsu in the Air Force. Actually, the Air Force is probably the least combat oriented branch of them all. And if you want to. I mean, fight, unless you're literally. Unless you unless are literally a combat airman. Yeah. Unless you're a combat airman, like you said. You you get no shit, and that's where like I learned crab, and that's where everyone was like drooling over me knowing jujitsu, like I was so cool, and that's when I was like, wow, that's how I got, like that's how everybody loved me. They're like, dude, you do jujitsu? Oh my god, I do too. And then just like, yeah, that's why. Hand and hand combat training was then. really ex uh, was a lot of fun in uh, basic. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I loved it. Because uh, in the normal Navy doesn't go through hand, they don't go through hand to hand combat training. But the, uh, um, oh, mine's the flick. yeah, yours is flickering a lot. Yeah, it yeah, is. I just did that. Oh my God. What the hell? I don't know. But, um, hi ghost. The hand, the normal Navy doesn't even go through hand to hand combat training, but they, uh, they split the basic training. So you have normal basic for the Navy for all the bosun's mates and electrician's mates and the uh, aviation ma uh, machinists and everything like that. All the people that do like the normal shit, the normal everyday shit for the Navy. And then you have the spec ops basic training, which is, um, it's all the SWIC EOD diver and air rescue swimmer and SEALs. So we have more time in the gym. We have more time in the pool. We have more protein in our diet. Um, for anybody that needs to cut weight, they have a more lean diet and significantly more time in the pool and in the gym. Um, I'll put it to you this way. In the two months, no, in the, in the first month of basic training, I went from 125 to 155 pounds. Damn, you get a lot of lean muscle mass. Woo! Yeah, I think one of our, lot. yeah, whenever I went through uh, basic training for me, granted, it's not that hard, it's the chair force. Right. But I went from like 140 pounds to like 165 pounds within like five weeks. It'll happen. Mm -hmm. um, no I mean, play. you're constantly running everywhere. You're constantly working out. The funny part is, for the majority of the time, I couldn't work out or run. Because I almost hyperextended the arch of my foot. You were oh. telling me about that. So you had to rest. Well, I missed an entire week of everything because I had my uh, wisdom teeth removed in basic, and um, and they gave me a prescription of oxycodone and Vicodin, and I was supposed to take an oxycodone and sleep for about three hours, and then take a Vicodin and sleep for another three hours, and alternate around the clock, and it did not work like that. They underestimated my ability to sleep. <laughs> Especially after going almost an entire month of getting like three and a half to four hours of sleep a night. It oh, was like, lucky. yeah, took oh, a Vicodin, you. went all the way around to like seven really o'clock at night, woke up and took an oxycodone and went all the way around to like zero three hundred, woke up, took an oxycodone, and then I would get like woken up in the middle, like dead sleep, like just painkillered up. And they're like, "Yo, Tim, we got to go to Chow, man." And I'm like, "La la." Hey, Chow, I, was like that. Hey, I was like you though. I was not. I didn't have time to even enjoy being high. I was just done. I was, like, after no, I got my dude, was, was, my buddy's like, "Dude, you didn't wake up. You were gone." And I, I was like, yeah. "Dude." Dune! Hi, Dune! How are you today, but Dune? That was a fun... No, that was a whole lot of fun. Not really. I don't know what happened. It was um, awesome. Yeah, so... I missed, like, almost an entire week of training. Like, I sat there... Tell Char to share Boba. <laughs> Dune no, wants, I won't. Dune wants Say Boba. hi, milady. Um, no, this is mine. But, uh... Yeah, I, I woke up with... I woke up once just long enough to take a test that they had brought me and I don't even remember how I did on the test but I woke up once and they were like you you, you need to take this test or they're gonna recycle you back through basic and I said the fuck they are fucking 
I'm six yeah. weeks. I'm six weeks in out of eight weeks. So you Fuck graduate, you. There's no, way it's gonna <laughs> there's no way it's gonna happen. I'm the fucking. I'm the. Before, I'm the recruit <laughs> chief petty officer of the fucking division. I'm the motherfucker in charge. You are not. Re you're not recycling me back through this <laughs> shit. I'm not doing this again. <laughs> I mean, it's funny what happens in the chair floors because it's usually due to stupid shit like like trash nose, like people that get recycled in basic. <laughs> right. We had someone punch someone's body armor and break their hand, in and fact, that's why they got recycled back boba? to our flight. And it was like, wow. Dude, said we and we both of them were combat boba? airmen. Both of them were trying to be pararescue. It was hilarious. Ugh. And then I met, I met them later, like after when I got attached to pararescue, like they email like. I, like I was, I got like two messages, and they're like, "Hey Morales, so I was like, dude, what are you? Why does your thing say RQS?" I was like, "I'm attached to supply," and they're like, "What the fuck?" And we, we saw each other when we went TDY. It was actually a lot funnier. But I made sure to remind, "Hey Tristan, remember when you punched that dude's body armor? It's the only reason you landed in our flight, motherfucker." You're like, "Yeah." <laughs> it was funny. It, it was uh, funny. So, I actually forgot about this until just now. Um. I, uh, when I was a kid, about eight, nine years old, I was at mm -hmm. Boys and Girls Club. And, uh, and we had gone on a, uh, like a Bible camp thing or like a, like a, I think, yeah, I think it was a Bible camp. It wasn't church camp because it wasn't, like, it wasn't with church. It was with, uh, Boys and Girls Club. But we went on a Bible camp, uh, trip for a week. And it was, um, I was sitting there in the, uh, in my bunk, in the cabin, sitting there reading with a flashlight. And I was holding it like, like, if I was holding it like right here to like be able to like read. And the guys in the cabin were having a, uh, they decided to have a pillow fight to just start fucking around or whatever. <laughs> And not so, like full metal jacket pillow fight, right? Like regular pillow fight, right? Like dude came. Oh no, not a uh, not a fucking not a blanket, <laughs> not a blanket party. No. Um. So dude comes around and hits the uh accidentally hits my hand and cracks me in the face with the fucking uh flashlight. And I've still got a scar under my mustache that you can see. Uh, Dang. fast fast forward ten years, basic training. This guy, uh, he's actually uh, where I'm the RPOC, he's the CPOC, so he's the uh, XO of the division, where I was the CO of the division. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, man, he was so he's my he was my bunk mate. So I was like, man, your name sounds really familiar. It was Danny Panzarella. I was like, your name sounds really familiar. I, I was like, where are you from? He was like, uh, I'm from all over the place. Um, my family lives in Texas, but we used to live in Tennessee. I was oh. like, I was like, really? Where at in Tennessee? He goes, um, we used to live in Gray, which is right outside of Johnson City, which is where I grew up. I said, did you go to the Boys and Girls Club in Johnson City? And he was like, yeah, when I was a kid. I was like, did you go on a church? Uh, did you go on a Bible camp trip in uh, the summer of whatever year, about 10 years ago? He goes, yeah. I said, do you remember giving me this scar with a fucking pillow fight, you son of a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> no. It Did dawned on me during our conversation. He was like, wait, you were, I was like, yeah, that yeah. was me. Yeah, that was You me, cracked me in the face. I have a fucking face, a badass face scar because you had a pillow fight. And I was in the way. Well, yours is a cooler story. I only have this because I ran into a basketball pool like up here. And that's mm -hmm. when I figured I have a really hard head. And my head could take shots from punches when I'm in Muay Thai. So <laughs> I, I ran full speed into a basketball pool because I was trying to chase a ball, okay? And, like, I didn't get a concussion or anything like that. I literally just, like, froze. And I started crying. And everyone was like, damn, you have a hard-ass head. Right. So whenever I take shots or, like, I don't even, like, move in general all i do is just prairie right like one into muay thai but i know i i can eat a shot so i know right. i can like it's just like they're like how the fuck is your head so hard i was like 
You don't want to know. Dude, for the longest yeah. time, I was afraid to get hit in martial arts. Mm, I was too, afraid then... to get hit because I was afraid of the pain. And then my instructor was working with me one day, and he um he actually picked me up and slammed me on the ground and got on top of me full mount. And they just uh, started beating the shit out of you. Just, yeah, just started beating the fuck out of me. I'm sitting there like walking, <laughs> like trying to move, trying to move. He goes, he grabs my hands and like, I'm like this now, like I can't move. And he like traps this arm underneath his leg, underneath his knee, and like oh, is holding mean. this one. Crucifix. And Does he, he goes, crucifix you or he just holds it? No, he's just holding it. And he goes, Oh God. I want to punch you in the face. Like really fucking hard. And I was like, I was in the, I, I was fighting. I was in that mindset of, well then fucking do it. And he goes, yeah, just, just like fucking. right in the fucking jaw. And I was like, he goes, did that hurt? I was like, I didn't feel it. He goes, good. And hit me again. And I was like, <laughs> 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 and ah, he, me more he when when he threw that second punch he like lifted up with his knee and i got my hand out and i just like reached up and grabbed him by the throat and just like pulled him down and threw an elbow into his face and he just kept fucking hitting me and i was like this d why does getting punched not hurt and he he was like you you just you I mean, it just doesn't hurt. Like, when you get hit, if you're in the right mindset, it's not going to hurt. My like fucking camera's rich? doing this shit again. Or like, like you said, mindset. Trying to get it to fucking focus. Oh, oh. fuck it. Um, but, and then, then, like, I was afraid to hit somebody bare knuckle. Because, like, we don't fight with gloves on. Because on the street, you're not going to have on gloves. So I was mm -hmm. kind of afraid to hit somebody bare knuckle because I was afraid it was going to hurt. And he was like, no, dude, when you hit somebody and you hit them correctly, it's going to feel like you're punching paper. And I never knew what he meant until mm. he made me hit him. He, uh, we had these swinging doors that, uh, like, or not swinging doors, but we had these doors that, like, opened up into the school. Uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the school is in an old tire warehouse that we modified, put, put in carpet and everything. And, um... Uh, they open up into the school. They only open mm -hmm. one direction. They don't open out of the school. Unless you get kicked into the doors by your instructor and they open mm -hmm. the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you know how to open the door? No, I can't. That would be me. We're, we're sparring. Sparring. Uh, for me, it was sparring. For him, it was playing. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. and my ass he like over throws over. me into the doors and like I went into the door and bounced back out because they went like a little bit out and like rebounded and threw me back into an elbow and like he just like pinned me against the door and was like working on my ribs and everything and like hit me in the stomach and like hit me in the face and he was like fight back fight back and I couldn't hear anything because I was like Defend, 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 defend. And then he stopped, threw his hand on my throat and said, hit me. And I was like, I still couldn't hear him. I heard one voice from the side. My boxing instructor said, hit him. And I threw the <laughs> fastest yeah. punt. It was like fucking Darth Sidious talking to Anakin. All right. <laughs> like, Do it. he was like, Do it. like all, all Do I it. hear, all I hear is, hit him and, <laughs> and <laughs> that's fucking awesome i threw the fastest punch i have ever thrown in my entire life and they said it's the fastest punch they've ever seen me throw and i have never thrown one this fast again and i hit him solomon has one scar on his face that was caused in a fight and it's right here and it's because he let me hit him and it Felt like I was punching paper. I proceeded to get my dick knocked in for the next 45 minutes by this man. But <laughs> I hit him. <laughs> hey, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's I got all one they hit. wanted. I got that's one hit. all that's they all wanted matters. was for me to hit him. And I that's fucking all hit him, all right? <laughs> Give me one. Good.
Uh, yeah, it's honestly, I fucking miss it, dude. I need my camera to focus. I mean, I don't miss getting punched in the face and everything. Like you said, it's sparring, but hey, it's fun being, especially when everyone's bigger than me. So, I mean, I only have an advantage because my arms are above average on reach, but I do kicks ninety percent of the time. So, I'm a fan of my kicks. That's I can that's keep. I can kind keep, of like. I can yeah. keep people at a distance with my kicks, and like I worked for, I worked for probably six months on my sidekick alone. I, in that six months, I probably threw around twenty thousand sidekicks, nonstop. And, um, just perfecting it. And I got to the point where when I throw a sidekick, like when we're, when we're sparring, I'll use a, I'll use a sidekick to not only keep you at a distance, but if my sidekick manages to connect, it's going to break something. So they're effective in keeping them away from me. And they're effective if they're close enough in snapping a couple of ribs. So... Granted, when I I'm sparring with my that. friends, it's nowhere near that intensity. Like, we, we pull punches. Even though we're full contact, we still pull punches with each other because we don't want to kill each other. Mm. Unless you're trying to beat the shit out of your subordinate. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that more than once. And that's either to the new guy or they're like, we need to get ready for a fight. And they're like, hit me. And I'm like, the only southpaw. And I'm like, but, okay. You ask you, shall we see? I wonder if we have any videos online. From the school. Jeez. We do. I'll pull them up. I don't know if I saw my hard drive where like everybody recorded me in jujitsu. I really don't know. I mean wrestling too. Like, I mean that's because I take I like record my kids and then I tell them what's wrong and then that's how it goes. But definitely not being able to wrestle MMA. I liked a lot more because I can wrestle, but you can't wrestle in Muay Thai, so it sucks. So yeah. But I'm a wrestler. Yeah, I'm a wrestler. Favorite thing. I'm so happy the season's almost ending, though. I have more personal time to myself. Right. Except they're teaching me to coach junior high. They're asking me to coach junior high now, and I'm like, I don't know. We'll see. I love my kids, and I love teaching wrestling because I'm good at it, and I beat their ass if they want to go after me, but it's a lot of time, so we'll see. We'll see. I like my evening. I have to. I like. I use those evenings to spar, so you pick. Uh, these are some you teach or you get your ass kicked. I don't know which one's better. Videos. <laughs> on our website. But I even know. Hmm. What did I get into striking? I think I got into striking when I hit the military. Other than that, I've been grappling my entire life. So, well, not my entire life, but up till high school. So, yeah, freshman year some, of high school. Those are some really old videos. I was hoping we would have videos that, like, Solomon or um, Connor had recorded. But we don't have those on the website. I probably have them on my phone, but I'm not going to find them right now. Mm -hmm. That's a long library to look after. It is. I mean, I have all, like, me and, me and all my travel pictures. I still have to sort through all of that. I have so much food. I've sorted out all the food, but I got to sort out Japan, and I got to sort out the Philippines. And I still haven't sorted out Taiwan from last year, so... I got a lot of sorting to do. A lot, too much, a lot of traveling. A lot. Well, because I've traveled so much, that's why I don't want to go to Orlando. Yes, I have that big tournament. I don't want to. I wouldn't want to either. Not after coming back from Asia. Like that's mm -hmm. you're probably you've been back for what almost a week, and you're probably still jet lagged. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still like I adapt quickly, but it's not. You know, it's no. It, fun. It's not the same. It's no fun. No, it's it's, not it's, it's no bueno. Fun. Mm -mm. That and with everything going on in my head right now, and the, I think the big thing keeping me from even competing in there is what I can do is I can forego this tournament, go to a tournament in Portland, and go to the big tournament in Modesto. Right. So I can go to two big tournaments for like a quarter of the cost right. and still see a lot of friends that I haven't seen before. But this is just a really big opportunity because I have all like the biggest streamers for like for Pokemon, for pro PvP, for. Right. For pro for pro Pokemon Go, they're gonna be over there, and one of them is actually a streamer. Like we've been friends and we talked a lot, like since they first started streaming on Twitch, and now they're like huge. Nice. So his name's Chris Scott. I haven't. We've been talking forever on like seeing each other and hanging out. He was supposed to come somewhere in San Jose, but he had a family thing going on. So 
But at the same time, I mental capacity is just nowhere near like prepared for Orlando because if I because I didn't go to the one in San Francisco, I am fucked. Like I have no confidence in Orlando, and there's a lot of big names over there. And the only reason I rank so high is because I've done so well in nine tournaments, even though I only have like three, even though I have two months of experience. Right. I've been only pro for two, and that's like what's been getting my name around. That, and I'm a really happy streamer. You really <laughs> are a happy streamer. Like I've, I'm a really I've happy never streamer, been and I support a lot of people. Like I. <laughs> Shit, I raged in today's stream earlier. <laughs> mm -hmm. A Several few times. times. Yeah. <laughs> I was and, there for uh, a little bit. I mean. So, but I don't think I've ever been in your stream and, like, you be, like, mad or upset or anything like that. Unless it's, like, something outside of, oh, trying to pop my back, outside of, like, the game or whatever. Today I did rage, and sometime this week I actually did rage. Like not like mad, mad, like not like mad rage, but it was. Pr I I guess they would consider that like personal rage, just because of all the shit I've been going through lately. Which like I said, streaming makes me really happy, but which is like, honestly one of the reasons yeah, I came like, like back to streaming is because the holidays were really rough for me, and I had a lot of shit going on, and I came back to streaming, and it's it's helped down a lot. Mm -hmm. It's one of my go-to things. Fighting is another, so I need to get back to it. That's the only reason I ran today, so that I can pro I can get the hell out. Like I can get my head straight and fuck everything that just happened today. And like literally, a lot of things that happened today, yesterday, and like just all the whole pile of crap that's been pulling up. And I'm less like, oh fuck it all. Right. Fuck it all. And yeah. like you, that happened on streaming day. So my mods were like, shit, because I've never, like you said, I've never like. I'm always 90% happy. If I'm not happy, it's rare. So yeah. what it is. I think that's you're really quiet over there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't how's really have... How's the Air active Force. duty Air Force treating you? Oh, absolute dog shit. Absolute dumpster fire. Absolute. What's your, what's your AFSC, Trash? Uh, 3D1X2, I'm a uh, cyber transport. Oh, that's not bad. But, like you, DD Tor DD Form 214 is a very powerful document. It is. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting on. Man. I'm currently <laughs> being medboarded. Ooh, there you go. He was diagnosed Yeah, medically with... forced out is no fun. He was diagnosed it's a long with process. schizoid personality disorder. So he is in the process of getting medboarded. On top of major two severe depressive disorder and a severe generalized anxiety. Yep. <clears throat> That's a lot of percentage. So it sucks that you have it because I do have MDD and I do have PTSD. My I don't have persistent, so that's good. But MDD you do is have no fun. persistent. My PTSD persistent is not even is from no the fun. military, which is the fucked up part. It's from taking a golf club to the face. Damn. Mine is like half and half. Like it's half and half. Like I'll half show you the pictures when we're not. Because it happened while I was in the military. I'll show you the pictures so like, when we're not sucks. recording for the podcast and when we're not streaming, and because uh, they're they're fucking brutal. But the funny not thing is, the, the doctor said that if it wasn't for what I knew in martial arts, that it would have killed me, because I was able to defend to the point where, like, I've got a big ass scar that runs right through here. Oh damn! I see it. Yeah, not quite, but I see like the line. Um, like, yeah, there. it's it's hard to see on the camera, but um, and the doctor said if it was an inch lower, it would have caved my eye socket in, which could have killed me. He said if it wasn't for what I knew in martial arts, I'd be dead. I walked into the school the next day. This was when I was just first going for rank. I was a yellow sash, and I had like some kind of mental block going on, and. It's basically the same as being a yellow belt, and I was trying mm -hmm. to go for um, green, or uh, it would be advanced yellow for you guys, because it goes yellow, advanced yellow, green, right? Something like that. Well, that's for, like, youth. For adults, it's different, but yeah, for youth, it would be pretty much, like, the same thing. Yeah, which I was... Something with, like, a purple belt. I think, like, something like that, yeah. So, with, like, basically, in, in Kung Fu, it goes uh, white, yellow... Green, blue, red, brown, black. So I was one rank in. Mm. 
and uh, oh, so you're like you were almost blue or like next one, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I was I was trying to work on green. I had some kind of weird mental block going on. I went out with some coworkers to make sure they all got home safe. One got too drunk, and I told her she wasn't gonna drive, and she told me to go fuck myself and swung at me. Um, Damn! See, this is why I hate fighting women, man. She <laughs> missed, lost her balance, and gave the ground a face high five. Like fucking bounced off that bitch. And uh, so that she didn't seem like the drunk bitch that fell on her face, she lied to everybody and told them that I hit her. Um, and then uh, got her uh, boyfriend and a couple of his buddies, or ex-boyfriend or whatever, and a couple of his buddies to come up to my work uh, one day while I was leaving and jump me out in the parking lot. Oof. Uh, I walked into the school the next day. I didn't even make it around the corner. And David goes, uh, my nickname at the school is Monkey Boy because I teach monkey-style kung fu. And uh, David goes, Monkey Boy, get in here. I was like, the fuck do you know I'm here? The fuck did I do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know I'm here? <laughs> uh, but David's a fucking space wizard, so I'm, I'm convinced he's a Jedi. Like the yep. epitome of a Absolute Jedi. Absolute Jedi. Yeah. Like not even apprentice. Not 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 apprentice. Like not, the, this like is the guy. This master. is the guy that's a tenth degree grandmaster recognized by the Shaolin <laughs> Temple. Same guy. So, and I'm pretty sure he uh, uh, heard my car pull up or something. Or he could just be a he wizard. Sense that shit. He, he sensed he, the he force. That shit. Just like right there, man. That Jedi. That Je the force is strong with that. Man. Right. So, I walk in. Uh, he didn't even, like, ask me what had happened or anything. He he could feel it, and he said, you want to train harder, don't you? I said, yes, sir, I do. This was the day after this all went down. I was still purple with stitches and bloody because there was still uh, fucking blood in my beard and everything. And uh, he was like, you want to train harder, don't you? I said, yes, sir, I do. He had been having a conversation with a second degree black belt for the last 45 minutes about, I don't honestly know what it was, but probably like if it wasn't like school related or whatever, I don't really like whatever conversation, whatever, but he was having a conversation with him for like the last 45 minutes and it was perfect time for me to show up because they had just finished their talk and I walked around the corner and I said, yes, sir, I want to train harder. And he goes, well, train the kid. And I trained one-on-one -on -one for a month straight with a second-degree black belt. And I made my next rank. And six months later, I became a student instructor. Ooh, congrats. I made two ranks within six months. Nice. When I it, Normally, it takes about... It it's supposed to take about six to eight months to make your yellow sash. It took me ten because mm -hmm. I didn't like I liked the idea of kung fu, but not the idea of fighting. Ah. Then I took a golf club to the head and didn't give a fuck anymore, and just wanted to break everything. So, I made two ranks within six months, and it was amazing. And I miss it every single day. But, uh... I agree. Yeah, I'll show you those pictures later. Oh, when, definitely. Uh, like, once we end this. There yeah, will be a point you. where I stop, though. Because I like my knees, and I like my thing. And like I told you guys, I love traveling and hiking, and... Martial arts is a big red flag when you like hiking and traveling, because when you break your shit, everything sucks, and risk. So... One of my bucket list things to do is I want to backpack Europe. I, it's been one of my, like, ever since I Let's went go. to Europe one time, I want to backpack. And I've always wanted to backpack there, and I freaking love it. Especially, like, you being spec ops, you already know about that hiking life, right, Timmy? Oh, so we, I was like, um, yo. Actually, one of the things that my, one of the things that caused my knee to blow out was an 18 mile hike. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Oof. It was a it was a hike slash run slash get the fuck back to the base, <laughs> and that's how my knee blew out. I'll go hardcore as fuck. Yeah, like, it was brutal. Honestly, though, all the shit that I went through for uh, SF was nothing compared to the shit that I went through for martial arts. My martial arts training was 
more intense than that was. Granted, Damn. I didn't make it far enough into the SF training to be able to get to the intense shit, but... Hey, you still did it. Like, three months in there ain't no joke. <laughs> I mean... That's what I say, like, I might, I might not have, I might not be a combat veteran, but I, I do, I did serve at a minimum of one day of active duty, and I am still a veteran, and there's not a motherfucker on this earth that can take that from me. Mm -hmm. I've had people try. You no joke. I've had people come to me and say, like, <laughs> one of them was my ex that came to what? me in our relationship and was like look at the discord chat uh, oh shit wrong button <laughs> all the boot camp failures who say working? they were are in the working? military okay. well be the first to be drafted keep the same energy <laughs> 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 now fuck that I'm gonna pull that med deke I'm gonna pull my med my med thing and be like now fuck you guys I'm gonna pull my deke Two fourteen that dick. shows a uh, RE four reinvestment code and say fuck you. Mm -hmm. um, That's when I start my month long trip to, to <clears> Europe. <throat> exactly. Backpack. Yep. Um. Sorry, I'm out of the country. Let's see the world before everyone blows up. Mm -hmm. No. Um. There's a difference between being a boot camp failure and having a medical injury that got you kicked out of the military. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But. Um, her dad was in the army, uh, during the Gulf, and um, she was like, "Well, dad went through this, and dad went through this. You weren't, uh, you're not even a veteran." And I was like, "The fuck did you just say to me?" Oh my god! I was like, "Look, first of all, your dad was supply." I was special forces. The training I went through in basic was harder than the training that he went through in his A school. So don't come at me sideways with that bullshit. Second of all, just because I don't have combat experience and I'm not a combat veteran does not make me any less of a fucking veteran. Absolutely. My DD-214 says veteran. My military ID says veteran. I did more in the three months that I was in the military than any motherfucker that wants to come at anybody in the military sideways and say this, that, or the other who never... Let me say it loud enough for the people in the back to hear it. Who never signed up for the military? Or made it past basic. Or, or no, I don't even care if they never made it past basic. I made it past basic. I don't care if they, 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 they never made it past basic. They went to the MEPS hotel and they were like, dude. Like, but the, the ones that never signed those papers, that never wrote a blank check to the United States government to give everything up to and including their life. Those motherfuckers that want to say anybody that was either med boarded, didn't make it through basic, unless you didn't make it through fucking processing or MEPS, I don't care if you finished one day of basic training and went home. Like, if you finished one day of active duty, you were a fucking veteran. You might not be a combat veteran, you might not have finished training. That does not make you any less of a veteran than anybody else that signed those fucking papers. I disagree with that. How so? I consider anyone that has finished basic to actually be a veteran. But basic is... Basic training is I considered active both duty. Ways. Like, we had a guy like that had a heart attack, or like his, he had a heart condition we got in. He still made it through half. So, technically... If you put it in a technical sense, basic training does count as your year of service. So it is very true. It well, is basic. Anybody went through basic. There's is still nothing. Veteran. There's nothing technical about it. Veteran mm -hmm. status isn't subjective or objective. It's yeah. defined 
yeah. by anyone who has served a minimum of one day of active duty in the United States military is considered a veteran. Basic training is active duty. Mm-hmm. Just the, because the, the you're day, not the on day deployment, you hit basic, it is it is it does count as active duty. Just basis. because you're not on deployment doesn't mean you're not active duty. Like after you get past after you get past processing, you're considered active duty. Therefore, at that point, even if you consider if even if you just finish a week of basic training, you're still a veteran. You might not have gone to A school. You might not have served in combat. That doesn't make you. That doesn't give anybody the right to take away your veteran status because the VA will still consider you a veteran until the day you die. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that those people that get out of basic for any reason that isn't an absolute serious medical condition are a bunch of pussies that couldn't make it through. Oh no, they're Absolutely. not we real no, soldiers. No, 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 no. no. That I completely agree with. Yeah, that I completely agree. That's what agree. I'm getting at. No, that yeah. absolutely. No, 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 that, of course, you are completely right. You're absolutely right there. You pussy out of basic? You pussy out of basic? <laughs> no, you do not hold the same fucking status that we hold. Like, That's what I was getting at. Okay, I got you. Fucking Luke, you are I got you. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you yeah, for the no. because you are absolutely fucking right. You are yeah, absolutely you puss out of right. basic training? No. No. That is a oh, different was, like, That was completely Stupid fucked shit, up in the yeah. majority of my basic training. Right. And yet the last week, I had to pass everything that I fucking could just so I didn't get recycled. Yeah. Do you know why I couldn't get recycled into the Navy? Because in 2010, the Navy got rid of their RCA unit, the recovery unit oh, for Oh, they injuries. did? Dude, that fucking sucks. They got rid of it three months before I went into basic training. So there was no recovery unit for me to go into to be able to rehabilitate my knee injury and be able to actually recycle back through training. If that were the case, I would have recycled back through training. I would have gone back through buds. I didn't care. That sucks. But there was no recovery unit for me to go into. So they wrote it up as an RE4 reenlistment code or RE3. I don't know which one it is. It's been like six years since I've looked at it. But they wrote it up as, thanks for trying. Try again in a year if you feel like it. And just wrote it up as an entry-level medical separation and sent me home. Mm-hmm. That's what's fortunate about the Air Force. The Air Force has the has a huge-ass hospital. Oh, like, yeah. It's like death row, but like we have a giant-ass hospital for recovery. Oh, no. The Navy does the now. Day. Yeah. Now that Obama's right. not in office. Okay. <laughs> I know, right? But if you didn't have an RCA back then, that really fucking sucked. Literally, that like, like sucked. yeah. The the definition like whatever, of thanks Obama is my fucking military service. <laughs> yeah, man. Like like whenever I went through basic, I felt so bad for this one dude. Because uh within like his first week, somehow he like completely destroyed his foot. Oh, God. So he was stuck in recovery. So we all met him whenever we had like little like uh like like you know Sundays were like you know church days and shit, mm-hmm. and there we had atheist church. So we went up there, we were hanging out, and like, all right, we're gonna start bringing up the people that have been here the longest. And the dude was like, "Yeah, I've been here eight months, and I'm still a zero weaker because I fucked up my foot." Uh, uh, I was like, "Oh, dude, I'm so sorry." That's so, so, that's go through so six bad. weeks, and then an extra week and a half of fucking Airman's Week. Oof. That sucks. Are the guys I've been there for like years because like ACL, like something of that situation, and they, they still make it through. Like, mad respect to you guys, but dang, like half of your like your first year of your career is basically I'm trying to recover. Yeah. Like, fuck, that sucks. That fucking sucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, Especially feel, like bad. Mentally, I feel bad. I feel bad for the hospital. guys that are going through that. Especially especially the dude that you're talking about, Basura, because like he's still in basic training. He's still on zero week. Possibly. There's no, oh, like, I'm not talking about now, yeah. but I'm talking, like, mm-hmm. at the time. Back in the day. Yeah. At that time, there's no, there's, you don't get a cell phone. You don't get TV privileges. You go through basic fucking training every fucking day. And you get no luxuries of being a civilian, but you're essentially a fucking civilian because you can't progress in your training. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're stuck in that hospital, like death row. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, I, I mean, never got injured. 
Well, I'm se- I was 17, so like I had a lot of life. But you got some guys in there that are like 27, 28, and like. Oh, know, dude, dude, there like was one dude in one of my uh, in, in like dude. in like one of my cousin flights that was literally 39. The age cutoff was 40, and he joined whenever he was 39. I was like, first off, why the fuck did you join this late, dude? You're probably you were probably making so much money. What are you doing? Right, like that. I want to serve my country. That's honorable, but dang, dude, you old, bro. <laughs> no, that's... Yeah, seriously. I'm, a, I'm like, if you're 40 years old and you're an E3, something's the matter, man. The cutoff for the Navy is 32. And I had a guy in my division that was 31. Oof. He, uh... I mean, at least he probably got an easier was... PT test if it's like the Air Force. <laughs> My division was freaking Ops, Air Force, dude. man. You know when everyone raises no their hands PT and they start test. going down age, and then you got a 17er? I was like, fuck. I'm going to get fucked. But they yeah, actually really liked, whatever, was 18. They really liked me. Yeah, they really liked me. I ended up being a TDL, so I, I t- had a leadership position, but damn, I sucked. So. I turned 19 in basic training. Let me tell you how much fun that day was. Oh, the the day that I was leaving basic training, that I was getting on that bus and going to my uh, to my training school, I turned 19. Best awesome. birthday present ever. Right. Um. <clears throat> so I just got a notification from Twitch. I have officially streamed for a thousand hours total. Oh, congratulations! Oh, uh, yeah. It popped up and was like recent. Um. It was like recent. Uh. Achievements Let's unlocked. See. And it was uh, the Empire business, which is streaming yeah. for a thousand hours total. Yeah, all I'm saying is that I can't wait until I get my uh, DD214. Right. Dude, welcome to the free world. And if you need help, you know we're here. Oh, yeah, that thing that we were supposed to look at that I completely forgot about. Yeah, man, I'm so excited to get a TD, to get a, a DD214 and be out of the military so that I can burn my fucking you. uniforms. Told you, dude, we're having a fucking bonfire. I mean, I saw ass, if I have to, stuffs. like my cold weather gear, I still use for hiking. I love it. Oh no, dude! Like no, all of this shit, all, all of this ABUs, shit, bro. All your gone. ABUs, all that. Did you guys already convert to OCPs? Uh, yeah, we're currently in the middle of conversion. Like we have to get them. Like everyone has to be wearing OCPs by uh 2021. What the fuck? Oh, okay, got you. Yeah. So everybody. But yeah, dead ass. Link, I will drive to wherever the fuck you are, and we will find a place to start up a fuck fucking yeah, bonfire. Yes. I got plenty I of people out here that have farms, and I will, I will get some binary from uh, U.S. Chemical Supplies, some binary uh-huh. explosives, and I will let you fire that shot. Yes. Like we won't, oh, we won't start it as a fire. Fuck hazmat. Fuck hazmat. That's all we gotta say. Fuck hazmat. No, like binary explosives. Are, fuck Seaburn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fuck Seaburn too. Fuck Seaburn too. No, binary explosives are uh, impact explosives. So you mix. Um, there's um, explosive pellets that you mix with um, an impact um, triggering agent that when you fire around at it, at least a I think it'll. I think there's some that'll trigger off of a five five six. But so we're gonna um, IED this bitch. I mean, essentially, yeah. It makes cool. a big ass boom. I'm I'm excited. Yeah. So Charmander, you're gonna be there too, right? I could try. I mean, <laughs> I, I I could try. I mean, I'll enjoy. I mean, if you record it, I want to definitely watch the video. Oh, and I want to yeah, see well, this I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll record it. Yeah. Way better sure. than fucking Afghanistan. We're like, ee, psh, oh right? shit! I want to blow shit up, not me get trying to get blown up. So. Right. So I was trying to pull up this YouTube thing because um, uh, YouTube's uh, it says important. All creators are obliged to take action to comply with the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act and other laws. Review your channel settings. I should probably check my channel settings. I have mine set as no set this chill set this channel as not made for kids. I upload. Content. Oh wait, no, I have that. Yeah, I just have it not set for kids. No. I never upload content that's made for kids. I love you. you can't curse. You love me. Can't do anything aggressive or anything like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, shit. super fuck that. Like, nah, like, nah. Fuck dude. that shit. Like, as a streamer, that's why I always have the mature content on there. Because even though I'm playing Pokemon Go, I will cuss on my streams. Or yeah. I do have a very non, especially not just being a veteran, but just I'm me a, as a person. I'm a fucking like, sailor. Fuck that. Cuss like a sailor fuck is an a, is an actual fucking like. It's not just a fucking term. It's an actual fucking thing. And, like, that's, I don't keep the mature content banner on stream because of the gameplay or the blood and gore. I keep it because of my mouth. <laughs> hey, you still trip me the fuck out, because when I was serving, when I was with special, when I was with spec ops, you, like, all the officers and calling you guys by your first names is the most trippy shit in oh, the yeah. world after, like, the first fucking month. Because yeah. when I call, when I call Chief Young, Freaking Anthony, I don't know what, like, call me by, there's, I'm calling a fucking E9 by the first fucking name, or I'm calling the fucking commander by, I, fuck, 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 sir, yes, yes, yep, yes, yep. and then when I go back into the real fucking Air Force, the pussy Air Force, I gotta call everyone by, like, Sergeant Watchamafuckit, and I'm like, Sergeant Watchamafuckit, <laughs> oh Sergeant like, Watchamafuckit, that's why I learned to flip the switch, because of Special Forces, because I'd go from, hey, Tim, how you doing, Tim? Oh, it's pretty good. It's going pretty good, sir. How's the wife? And everything like that. And then literally when I step out of my sector and step out of my bubble, hi, Sergeant Young, how are you doing? Oh, how is yep. everybody? I'm so kind. I love you. And yep. then everybody at the bay, back in the supply base, is like, man, fuck that dude. Fuck that dude. And all I hear is, oh, are you having a bad day? No, I'm not. No, 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 that's not like everywhere. Like, you guys got your own cultures. Like, maintainer culture, fuck everything. Maintain culture, absolutely. That's why I love special forces. I love maintainer culture. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> we don't give a fuck. But other than that, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Have That's how guys, I learned to, like, create my film. Have you guys seen the uh, TV show Seal Team? I've no. seen you need the, to. like, trailer, but I think I've seen it on, like, Netflix. It's in the third season right now. It's not on Netflix. Um, it's Well, it might be Okay, never mind. It's no, on... never mind. That was just your training videos. Never mind. It's not the season. I just saw, like, all your guys' training videos. It's on I Hulu, I think. Just, just find it. It's called Seal Team, and it's only been out for a couple of years. It's on season three right now, it. but it's um, it is probably the most accurate portrayal of what the Seal Teams go through on a regular basis, like between the training and the recruitment process and everything like that, and like the missions and everything. It is the most accurate portrayal of the Seal Teams that has ever been made. I mean, you guys just go through a bunch of shit in general, like, fuck, <laughs> fuck that. Like, when I, when I found out that, like, even though you guys finished SEAL Team, or like, any of the, like, Spec Ops divisions finish their, like, general training for whichever branch they're going through or whichever school they're going through, that you can still fail and get washed back and have to get reclassed if you fail leadership training or any portion that finish your guys' quals, fuck. Uh, like, y'all, like, damn, you know, the intensity. You know, Fuck. Buds isn't SEAL qualifiers, right? Really? Bu Shit. Buds isn't. The six months that you go through Buds is not SEAL qualifiers. That's not your training. Mm -hmm. Buds is basic underwater demolition school. You go through the basics of underwater breathing techniques, staying calm underwater, demolitions, um training, stuff like that. Everyone that's in Special Forces for the Navy goes through the first three months of BUDS, and then anyone who is like an uh, air rescue swimmer goes to Pensacola. Anybody who's EOD goes to Arizona. Anybody who is um, uh, oh, yeah, we do have that SWIC that. is... Uh, I forget where SWIC goes. And then the SEALs stay in Coronado, California. And they finish out their last three months of BUDS is SEAL specific. And then you're, you're not a SEAL after that. If after you graduate BUDS, you're not a SEAL. You're... I think they still refer to them as green team. Basically, you're on, you're on a probationary team. And they have a draft. The uh, You continue to train for up to two years 
after buds to finish your like close quarters combat training, your rifle, your marksmanship training, mm -hmm. your You guys still gotta do EOD, your water mm -hmm. survival, all mm -hmm. that other crap. You guys still have to jump too. Like what's cool about you guys on SEALs is you get to do water jumps like way more than the parent well, I guess it bears. I mean they do both, but you guys do a lot more intense, like a lot more in depth water jump training. But it's like then after a certain amount of time, the active duty SEALs determine whether or not you're ready to become a SEAL and have basically an NFL draft. And whoever is scoring the highest, whoever's performing the best, is like that first round draft pick. And all six SEAL teams try like are trying to get are trying to recruit other people like are trying to recruit people around like each other they basically have a fucking draft pick mm -hmm. and it's up to the other seals to determine whether or not you are ready to become a seal buds does not make that you a seal sucks. the two years of training you go through after buds makes you a seal and if you don't make it within that two years you can either keep training and keep going for it, or they offer you your old contract back. Which means you went through buds and everything for nothing just to become an electrician. You could say you went through it, but like just the like everybody like they try to get back into it. Like yeah, someone like they'll get out. Like a lot of people in the air force, but you have to do a certain amount period and then you can reapply and then you can go back to spec ops but you don't want to go there and then some people even do that and then get reclassed back and still yeah. don't make it so that's what the, the the freaking ploy of like special operations and just like the way you guys like operate and the way you choose who actually becomes who it's fucking insanity like it people really think it is but then when you hear it like directly from like someone that's actually been there and like you see guys that get reclassed because they couldn't make it past qual training fuck like they're like i walked in we had a guy we had a lieutenant he um lieutenant amazola he failed leadership training leadership quals and this is like a year and a half of training he walked into my bay and he was like hey sergeant morales and i was like hey, hey. oh no yeah he was like sergeant morales and i was like you didn't call me ivan are you okay and then we like shut my doors and then like he talked to me he's like dude i got reclassed i was like fuck how are you taking and he's like i'm doing pretty good i'm doing all right but they said i couldn't make it like i didn't have the leadership quality for it and I mean, he came back. It's called MQT, and he was like, "That's what it comes down to." Like, yeah. If you're, right? if I mean, you can't just be a follower in SF. You, like when you're, uh, if you're second in command, when when your team leader gets shot and goes down, or if he's knocked unconscious due to an explosion, or if you're separated for some reason, or if he gets separated and you are now first in command of six to eight other guys, like, you have an entire squad that depends on your leadership skills. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And you if have to die. be able to step up. You you either step up or your whole fucking team could die. And I and the ones that can't step up and their whole team if if someone made it through and they can't step up and everyone on their team except them manage it, like is killed, and they somehow manage to survive, they have to live with that guilt for the rest of their life. That's gonna fuck you up. Any sole survivor of any kind of combat like that, in general, it fucks them up. I had a buddy of mine. He's a bodybuilder now, and he's actually doing really well. But he was in the army about 20 years ago, and he is... Uh, he doesn't work. His he streams a little bit on Mixer now because he's streaming from his uh Xbox, but he just plays Call of Duty and goes to the gym and works out and competes in bodybuilding competitions. And uh the reason he doesn't need to work or anything is because he got a full medical retirement from the army because he's the sole survivor of his Black Hawk going down. His entire squad was in the Black Hawk with him, and he's the sole survivor. Oh, God. I've drank many of nights with that man, and holy shit, can he hold his liquor. I can Better than me, Just which is saying know. something. I went out with some friends last night, and my bar tab was like $95. That's without the wings that I ate. 
and I was sober. Right? <laughs> like just hearing that shit just makes you so much better like that was one of the things that was like eating me basically i'm not gonna say who but basically my leadership decision got flung back at me and it was basically a people pleaser's decision so people fear me because of my power and what they here's the thing here in perspective for not just special forces but just the military in general if i have people that like me i don't give a fuck i gotta get shit done I don't care if the guy that is coming back to me isn't worth my time and I don't deem it. And you know we got to assess that shit fast as fuck. Yeah, we do. We don't have time for this shit. Nah. We really don't. Like, like we got to get shit done. We got to make decisions. Fucking, I ain't about to let this mission go down. Or I'm uh, if I don't do this, nobody deploys. So if you do that from a perspective where I have to deal with a child and I deem you as a child in like five minutes and you're better, where our server is better off without you, I'm going to fucking do it. I don't give right. a fuck. Like, People and then people are like this isn't you. You're so nice and everything. You don't know me as a leader. Like yeah, we've had like, to like we've had to do hard decisions. Like I'm the time I'm like I'm the guy past stage one of fucking busting my balls and being a man. I don't care who likes me or unless it's right. like someone really close to me. I don't care if the general guy that I just kicked out is a fucking child, has his shirt off in fucking Discord and tries to act like he's a fucking like you have nuts. But you actually don't. Then when someone barks back at you, and I got bigger balls, and I bark bigger, and I could probably kick your ass in real life too. And you go away. I'm convinced away, you can kick my ass in real life. And I, just, uh... <laughs> I know I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'd be like so sweet. I'd be like a fucking teddy bear, man. But that's basically like what the situation is. I'm Until not a people pleaser. Slams you. She's like, like everything was like, oh, like that's not you. Everybody's packed, and I want peace. You're not gonna have peace. You're going yeah. to have one guy, especially when you get popular as a shooter, just anywhere in general, like. You guys get big, you're going to have a lot of people that are going to come by, and you need to make that decision. And now, uh, are people going to look at you after you make that decision? They're not going to fucking like you? Yeah, they will. You think that goes on my conscience? I don't give a fuck. Right. And that's what you have to like, be. Like, you, you guys got, know, that's how you have to be. Like, with leadership. Especially in the military. You've got, you've got to be able to, like, you've got to be able to compartmentalize everything where, yes, I am a nice person. Well, I'm not. I'm an asshole. But, like. I'm an absolute asshole. I just look nice. I'm a nice but, person. Actually, I am nice, but we're nice people, but, like, you know what I mean, yeah. Like, I can be a nice person until shit needs done. Mm. And if you're wasting my time and not doing your shit, this nice, sweet, innocent little Tim over here that, like, tries to get everybody to get along and everything is going to get real fucking pissed. And his whole fucking mood is going to change. And you're going to be fucking terrified. Because when it comes down to it, and this is going to make me sound like the biggest piece of shit ever. But when it comes down to it, I would, ma I would much rather, from a leadership position, I would much rather have, some have someone fear me than respect me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to lay down. You, like, no, that's absolutely right. You are completely right. You have to lay down the rule. If no one lays down the rule, no one respects you or will respect your power. When shit needs to get done and everybody's running around with a chicken with a head cut off, they're not going to listen to you yelling and try to take a man. No. It's good that people fear you. You're going to have people that respect you. You're going to have people that fear you. It's better that they fear us because that means when I say we got to get shit done, <laughs> now, I'm wrong about my decision by all fucking means. I'm wrong. But when we got to shit, get reach shit it. done or you don't mean shit, <laughs> fuck that. We're done. But yeah, exactly. What that? Yeah, what? I don't have, I don't have anything because I'm in California, but yeah, fucking... Fuck yeah, bring out all the fucking knives and all this shit. Does anybody have a fucking hammer? Because that's exactly what- Yeah, there you go! There you go. That's what it is. And like, a lot of people, what I've noticed on like Discord, don't really get that. Because as a Pokemon Go thing, you're gonna see people face to face, so you see that shit a lot. So you kind of get that mode as like a Pokemon Go admin, because we do see people face to face and shit. Well, you can't it's hide like... you on the fucking computer screen. And like... But in Discord, it's easy. Um... But like, us being in the military, you guys know how that is. Okay. I, I'm one of the I'm I'm the kind of guy that's like, yes, I I like it when people respect me because I know anything I ask of them is going to get done. Mm -hmm. And the people exactly. that respect me as I'm asking them to do something, if I tell them to do something, it's also going to get done. But the people that don't respect you. The, the people that don't like you don't respect you. Exactly. And those and people <laughs> and those people who don't respect you exactly. Is that Spiderco? No, it's a uh, Benchmade. That still looks oh, okay. cool as shit. I okay. love it. Benchmade is awesome. Yeah. Love Benchmade. Um, but like, the, yeah, I want to get Spiderco. 
the people who respect you, whether you ask them or tell them to do something, they're going to do it. But the people who don't, re who the people who don't like you don't, are not going to respect you. And the people who don't respect you probably don't like you. So those people need to learn to fear you because the people who don't respect you, the people who don't like you, the people who don't see you as a friend, as a leader, if they don't fear you to a degree, when you ask them to do something, they're not going to do it. But when you tell them to do something, it better fucking get done. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You better get this shit done. If you do not, one, our asses are going to get handed, everyone's going to get in trouble. So fuck you, fuck that. And if you ain't worth keeping around, why the fuck would I keep you there anyway? Exactly. And I deal with that shit at the restaurant else, like all the mod, fucking time. Fuck that. Fuck that. I don't give a fuck. I do Again, the quickest way to make someone to fear you is this. Yep. <laughs> exactly. And it's even better when you're like, people think that like, oh, you're just this night nice, sweet and like you want, like you'll definitely accommodate everyone. Fuck that, dude. Like if we got to take bullets, like we'll take there bullets. You if you like me, you, if you like you said, nice. if you don't like me, you better get shit done when I tell you to. Otherwise, I'm going to make you do it. And everybody else, especially we're going to fucking make you do it. Right. Like I would, because that's just I, the way we don't play. I like the idea of people like I like the idea of the people that are around me respecting me. Yes, but the ones who don't like me, who I'm not friends with, they're gonna fear me. Mm -hmm. Especially when I it comes to leadership. You, I'm not gonna kill you, but still, like. Right. I mean, I'm not. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I like what trying to do right now. <laughs> Just sitting there, just. <laughs> hey man, hey man. All I need is one. All you need is one, exactly. True. All you need is one, especially these little, like, fucking keyboard warriors and, like, immature little brats that come out here as, like, Twitch fans Shit. or whatever. One v one And then after you fucking bust their balls and then they start acting like they're offended, what happened to that? What happened to you and having your shirt off in your Discord picture, bro? What happened to you having a big <laughs> dick and you thinking you have a big dick? Oh, now you're like, I fucking love it. Wow. But that's for the thing, like, everyone, like, as a kid, as me, as, like, real quick. I agree. I'm a, <laughs> like, you guys know, you guys know my persona, and that's why everybody loves me like pokemon go and everything like that like everyone knows me as the really nice and sweet guy but i like look at everybody like you don't know like i told someone that thought they knew me i told her they're like this isn't you no you don't know me like right. you not you not only do you never bother to ask me anyways but you don't know me the only I mean, ones to that be really fair, know me are like to my be brothers fair, to be fair i don't know you yeah you don't know me do you, you know me more than a lot of people though you know me a lot more than a lot of people just because we're brothers, or just because we're air, we're chair forces, we're chair forces. So you, you know, you understand me. A I lot mean, more. I don't know, man. That that tag, this tag right here, might be going away for the space force. <laughs> hey, DD form two fourteen. DD form two fourteen. Yeah, man, that's what I'm trying to get out before I have to, you know, sign a fucking agreement fucking that's saying space. that okay, I'll live the rest of my enlistment in the space force. Right. Like, well, like it's not going to be air force anymore. It's going to be like four branches, and the air force is going to be known as the space force. Right. Nope. Which is fucking hilarious. When hey, I heard I'm that, just I was saying, like, oh the, sec my God. the second the Space Force introduces the Spartan program, I'm re-enlisting. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> oh, yeah. Once oh, I yeah. become Master Chief, absolutely. If you tell me absolutely. I could be Master Chief, Lutely. you're telling me I'm going to shoot lasers instead of fucking bullets? Like, yo, that's game over. I don't have to worry about my gun jamming unless it's like some like light rounds or some shit like that. Right? But I will take it. Oh, all right guys i think that's gonna do it we're coming up on an hour and a half we're a little bit over an hour and a half now so i think i'm going to uh call it for the uh this Sweet. this episode of the head glitch podcast thank you all so much for hanging out with us basura cat thank you for being here as always charmander thank you so much <laughs> for joining us i'm glad we were finally able to get you on the podcast now that you're not traveling the world and everything whenever i have time I will be here. All right, so, so I'm hearing that this name of this podcast is going to be Three Disgruntled Military Men. <laughs> uh, Three Disgruntled Military Men and the Revelation People of like. It's going to be yeah. like. Um, <laughs> and the Revelations of Martial Arts. Uh, Some shit it's, like that. It's going to yeah. be like a wild Charmander appears and discusses Sergeant What's His Fuck or whatever the hell he said earlier. <laughs> Some shit like that. Yeah, Sergeant Who the Fuck His Name Is, I have no fucking idea what the fuck. Like, yeah. I mean, like, what are the plans after? Are you going to go to Cushy, Tim? Or like. Uh, gonna yeah, I'm going to jump back into Cushy. Yeah. I'll jump in there too and then we'll talk in there. Yeah, for sure. We'll but, but for everybody, everybody on the watching podcast, this, hopefully you're having a wonderful day. For okay. everybody watching this on YouTube, um, I will have a link to all of our Twitch channels down below, as I always do. We are still trying to get Basura Cat to affiliate. He's playing a lot of Siege and a lot of Le uh, League of Legends right a, now. A lot so of League. I haven't been playing much Siege. A lot of League. 
He's playing a, a lot, lot of, of league, league right dude, now. Dude, League of Legends is my thing. You need someone in the lane, I need to practice again. So that's exactly All right, dude, you want to be my ADC? I'm a support main. Dude, I can ADC. I mean, I'm brand new, and I'm probably going to cause you a lot of grief in the first few matches. Dude, but hold I up, hold up, hold up. Nami's really well, so. brand new, and Nami he does perfectly fine in ADC whenever I'm Nami's his support. Chat too. Oh, yeah. you play with Nami? So yeah, you're the Nami's support Nami's chat. talking about. Oh my god, we've been talking about me going back up. And they're like, y'all need a jungler. Basically, that's what I was like, I got. Y'all need a jungler. And I can JG, but I don't know how relevant Javali JG is. We're going to continue this middle, off but... podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna because I'm, off trying, podcast. Yeah, I'm right. trying to end we're, the we're, fucking we're gonna podcast, gonna damn it. <laughs> trying to end it before we get to an hour and 45 minutes it. again, we Basura. We've discussed like, this. You got to jump into Cushy and we got to talk about this madness. <laughs> so, guys, thank you again for joining us. Uh, join us next week. I'll be, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this up to upload, but I'm going to set it to premiere. That way it premieres at the right time. And, uh, we're going to be streaming the podcast again next Sunday. Uh, uh, if this goes up on time, it'll be tomorrow, uh, from when this goes up. And, uh, we record the podcast every Sunday at 8 PM Eastern standard time. So if you want to be there, join up on my Twitch channel. And uh, we stream the podcast and I record the podcast and everything and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.